In the previous video, we focused on recording purchases under a perpetual inventory system. This video will focus on how we record sales under a perpetual inventory system. Sales may be made on credit or for cash. In accordance with the revenue recognition principle, companies record sales revenue, just like service revenue, when the performance obligation is satisfied. Typically, this occurs when the goods are transferred from the seller to the buyer. Every sales transaction should be supported by a business document that provides evidence of the sale called a sales invoice. The original copy of the invoice goes to the customer, which is the purchase invoice, and the seller keeps a copy for use in recording the sale. The invoice shows the date of sale, customer name, total sales price, as well as other relevant information. The seller makes two entries for each sale. The first entry records the sale. The seller increases or debits cash or accounts receivable if a credit sale and also increases or credits sales revenue. The second entry records the cost of the merchandise sold. The seller increases or debits cost of goods sold and also decreases or credits inventory for the cost of those goods. To illustrate a credit sales transaction, PW Audio Supply records the sale of $3,800 on May 4th by debiting accounts receivable and crediting sales revenue for $3,800. They will also increase or debit cost of goods sold and decrease or credit inventory for the cost of those goods. In this example, we assume the merchandise cost $2,400. We will now look at the flip side of purchase returns and allowances, which the seller records as sales returns and allowances. These are transactions where the seller either accepts goods back from a purchaser, a return, or grants a reduction in the purchase price, an allowance, so that the buyer will keep the goods. Sales return and allowance is a contra revenue account to the sales revenue, which means it offsets the sales revenue account. The normal balance of sales returns and allowance is a debit. Companies use a contra account instead of debiting sales revenue to track the amount of sales returns and allowances. This information is very important to management. Excessive returns and allowances suggest problems such as inferior products, inefficiencies in filling orders, and or mistakes in delivery or shipment of goods. PW Audio Supplies entries to record credit for returned goods involves an increase or a debit to sales return and allowance and a decrease or a credit to accounts receivable for $300, which is the selling price. We also need to record the cost, and if we assume the cost is $140, then we're going to increase or debit inventory and decrease or credit cost of goods sold. In the previous example, we assumed that the goods were not defective. If they were defective, PW Audio would make an entry to the inventory account to reflect the decline in value. If the inventory had a value of $50, then we would increase or debit inventory for $50, and we would decrease or credit cost of goods sold for the same amount. If the goods were not returned, but instead the seller granted the buyer an allowance by reducing the purchase price, the seller would debit sales returns and allowances and credit accounts receivable for the amount of the allowance. An allowance has no impact on inventory or cost of goods sold. As mentioned in our discussion of purchase transactions, the seller may offer the customer a cash discount for the prompt payment of the balance due. The seller refers to this as a sales discount. Like a purchase discount, a sales discount is based on the invoice price, less returns and allowances, if any. 
The seller increases or debits sales discounts for the discounts that are taken. Like sales returns and allowances, sales discounts is a contra revenue account to sales revenue. Its normal balance is a debit. Sellers use this account instead of debiting sales revenue to track the amount of cash discounts taken by customers. The entry by PW Audio to record the cash receipt on May 14th, which is within the discount period, is to debit cash for $3,430. We're also going to debit sales discount and that is calculated by taking the balance that is due of $3,500 and multiplying that by the 2% discount. The credit to accounts receivable is for $3,500 and that re represents the amount that is due. If the customer does not take the discount, PW Audio simply increases or debits cash for $3,500 and decreases or credits accounts receivable for the same amount at the date of collection. The solution to this exercise will be provided in another file. This slide does a fabulous job of summarizing both the sales and purchase transactions for a merchandising company using the perpetual inventory system. Make sure you study this slide carefully.